A fundamental principle regarding mental well-being revolves around the idea that the more we suppress our ability to convey our thoughts and feelings, the more our mental state deteriorates. When we repress emotions such as anger, sadness, or fear, it initiates the emergence of secondary symptoms such as insomnia, paranoia, resentment, and digestive issues. The moment we inhibit our inclination to express these emotions, our mental and physical health tends to suffer. However, the challenge frequently lies in finding suitable opportunities for expression. While we might be theoretically prepared to articulate and experience a wide range of emotions, external circumstances can often hinder our freedom of expression. It's possible that the person we wish to communicate with is no longer alive, or they might be unavailable due to their own distractions, fragility, or intimidating demeanor. Consequently, we mistakenly believe that speaking up holds no value leading us to bottle up our emotions at an increasing personal cost. Yet, this oversight ignores a peculiar aspect of our psychological makeup. What can hold significant importance in various scenarios is not necessarily whether the intended recipient is capable of receiving our message, but rather the chance for us to thoroughly express ourselves. Sometimes, the act of vocalizing our feelings to an empty shoreline, a substantial pillow, or a vacant chair can be equally beneficial as engaging in a lengthy conversation with an intimidating parent or an inscrutable partner. A particularly effective approach within this framework involves composing letters that are never intended to be sent. Whether the addressee has passed away or the content seems destined to be misunderstood, the act of writing. A comprehensive letter serves to crystallize our previously tangled emotion. It compels us to methodically and emotionally articulate our narrative. In the process of writing, we transform what might have been an incoherent outburst into a coherent, convincing, empathetic, and poignant composition. The act of writing allows us to transition from simplistic expressions like, I despise you, so much, or bewildered questions like, why, why, to a leisurely exposition of our feelings, the reasons behind our suffering, and the enduring impact of our wounds. It's akin to an experienced attorney presenting a case in a room full of adults on behalf of a perplexed or frightened child. Through these letters, we guide our absent reader through the intricacies of a narrative. They might have denied or attempted to silence. This practice grants us the opportunity to validate our emotions in our own eyes. It becomes evident that the true audience we needed all along is ourselves. Unnecessary suffering arises from the misconception that catharsis can only occur in the physical presence of the person who inflicted the harm. Fortunately, our liberation surpasses such limitations as the most significant skeptic. We need to convince and elucidate our complete story. Two is primarily and critically our own selves.